阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥。Respectful、um, Dharma brothers and sister Auntie and、uh, everyone、um, in front of the screens,、um, thank you for joining our、uh, sessions for English、um, lessons on cause and effect, called Treaties on Response and Retributions. So、uh, it's been a while、uh, since last time we had the session. So、uh, just to help each other, you no, know, myself and everyone's.、Um, Memory,、uh, to recap what we have learned. So this book is about cause and effect.、Uh, we have、um, have a brief introduction on its,、um, you know, how we get、uh, came across this through Master Ching Kong,、uh, and hence the、um, Pure Land Buddhist masters, and why is it important for our cultivation, even though it's not a Buddhist book,、uh, for us who practice Buddhism, Pure Land Buddhism. Uh, and this sentence already told us directly why we need this because it teaches us how we navigate our life.、Uh, because our life is、um, is、uh, operate like how to say it's guided, it's governed by events, many events, and these events has good and bad. And each of these events that happens upon us, we might see randomness at this.、Um, Occurrence, but the fact is, this effect、uh, is done by our own actions and our own actions only.、Um, and these actions came came across many lifetimes. That means the time is then not not an issue. It's just a matter of time. So, heard the exalted one Lao Tzu, the founder of Taoism, said that every fortune, every misery, good or bad, that do not happen at random. There's no randomness in this. There's no.、Um, Someone controlling the puppet behind the scenes. It's due to our own speech,、um, speech thoughts and actions. So those are caused by the karmic actions of each individuals. So all these rewards, all these punishments, they came follow us、um, exactly like the shadow following our body. So what we do, the consequences or the rewards will come back to us. So that. Pretty much explains the whole concept of karma. You reap what you sow, and while it seems like you know very straightforward,、um, you know, be a good guy, you know, don't break the law, but there's more than it meets the eye. I will put it that way.、Um, not because it's very you know, mysterious or anything, but it's because、um, this thing needs、um, proper read through before we come back to this wording of. We read what you saw. Only then we can appreciate it better and apply it in our life. That's the whole point of these sessions and、uh, the sessions we have. So、um, they explain how this works. They explain that how、um, the heavens, how how the how the nature,、uh, how to say, applies this sort of、um, karmic、uh, karmic law into us. Uh, we do have、uh, involved like some kind of enforcers. So in this concept,、uh, those spirits are usually the enforcers of karma, and ultimately it still depends on your own actions.、Uh, if you did nothing wrong, you have nothing to fear from a policeman. Same thing, like if we if we project from our human、uh, world. So same for the karmic. Uh, side of things, or from the spiritual world, those gods that they mentioned here, you know, the spirits of justice, they all like police. They all like, you know, judge, and they only follow the law. They only 
uh, give sentence according to the law. They can't do things on their own uh, whim, at their whim. Everything has a guideline for them, governed by that. And what governs them is the karmic. So basically, that's the um, penalties they mentioned here. And worst penalty is death, right? Because without life, there's nothing else uh, in our context. But if you can't live, then you can't enjoy anything or, you know, there's nothing. So that's the foundation upon everything built on, your life built on by being alive. So if, you've, if you um, pass away or anything, then whatever you gain will go back to zero in our human context. But that's the point of us having this. It does not go to zero. It will keep recurring whatever debt you have or whatever rewards and move on to your next sort of existence. So this breaks, breaks um, this, how to say, built on the foundation of uh, like something like this uh, which is the guideline of being a good person, built on the foundation of um, Sai Liao Fan Si Xun, uh, uh, Mr. Liao Fan, who changed his life, you know, changing destiny. Or Mr. Yu, who encountered the stove god and changed his life. Built on that foundation uh, that we have get, uh, gone through last, last, uh, last few years, uh, this is the book they follow on. And this is the, the book they abide by uh, during their you know, journey to change their habits, hence the, their, their destiny. That means their life, their circumstances. So um, this is why we learn this uh, book of cause and effect, basically, is in Guo Bao in the Shu, um, to give us a context, appreciation of what's actually in there. And they um, list it out in, uh, you know, many kind of offenses that we may incurred or might uh, without knowing. And the point of having this is to tell us um, we need to be careful with what we say, what we think, uh, what we um, act on. Uh, even the smallest thoughts can have consequences that you never know. Um, it will accumulate, right? Just like fortune, you accumulate your fortune by saving a little bit, cutting down the expenses, uh, invest in something, so does our karma. And they are all related. Your fortune is because of the good karma. And if your good karma is not, uh, how to say, uh, how to say, uh, you, you're not aware of this level of existence, this level of um, how life came to be, then what we're doing, we're doing blindly. We, it's like walking on the street without... Um, uh, walking in the street without legs, you know, or losing the sight, you can't see anything, you're blind. So you might, you know, crash and fall. So knowing this and knowing that everything has consequences, that's the whole point of chapter one, trying to tell us that everything will follow us like the shadow follow your body. Uh, our action, our deeds will call up with us or our good reward, our good heart heartedness and good reward will catch up to uh will um, return to us in a way we never know there are many life example before i move on one of the example of how how to say how important a kind deed is uh there was a case i came across when i reading the you know amitabha tainan um uh, videos uh, that commemorates the passing of Venerable Master Ching Kong and they list out the examples of the importance of cause and effect. Uh, one of them is a um, a priest from Italy. He's a Catholic priest and he went to Taiwan and I think it's Luigi or something. Um, just the priest, the Italian priest, he went to Taiwan and he um, there was a lot um a few decades ago, he built church. Um, he built he built the um, let's say the uh, sick houses to house the poor, the sick, and invest a lot of money or help to gather donations to take care of the poor peoples. And he has been doing that for decades. And when he realized during the COVID nineteen, as you know, every you know nation in the world they locked down, and a lot of people dies by thousands. Um, he's coming from, he hailed from Italy 
and we might heard from news Italy is the one of the most worst hit on the first wave of COVID back in early 2020. There are about about 500k people dying uh, in total. Sorry about the numbers, but I can uh, I I heard of it in Australia here that Italy dies in thousands, and there are reportings of you know the elderly couples and you know who one day was fine after you know contacting this disease pass away, or you know they were forever separated. So this is a terrible um, disaster that befalls on humankind. And Italy is one of the worst hit, and this one well, that is his hometown, and he's um, you know trapped here in, in in Taiwan and don't know what to do. He's trying to ask for help, and everyone who was helped by him over these decades of charity work, you know, um, suddenly you know brings all the connections and networks in, and accumulated. I don't know how many millions, tens of millions of dollars to supply medicals, uh, equipment and everything back to Italy. So this is a live example of a person in modern times, which just recent, you know, a few years ago, who has done good without asking for anything in return. Because first thing is he's a priest and a man of religion is always um, follow the teaching, who, who truly follow the teaching, will always do good. Uh, that's the basic requirement. That's why we're learning this. No matter what religion you are, do good is important. Uh, and do good because it's the right thing. Uh, it, it's the first step towards sagehood. It's the first step towards a better life. So he did that without asking for anything in return because he's, that is his duty, his job as a priest. And little did he know, it comes back to him in a way that he never expected when he needed the most. Uh, the nation that he had helped a lot now gives back. The people gives back and help his own people back in Italy, his, his family, his communities. So this is an example of, um, you know, the our deeds follow us like shadow, follow our body. Uh, um, so knowing that, uh, we also need to know how fine, how minute um, can a deed be committed? Can a karma be committed? That means can a will of... Uh, cause and effect be spun. So this goes to a story of ancient time, ancient China. There is a man by the name of Mr. Wei, uh, given name is Zhongda, family name is Wei, Wei Zhongda. So Mr. Wei, he was a scholar, Confucius scholar back in Imperial China. I think it was in Ming Dynasty, during the time, um, Ming Dynasty. Uh, and one day he, he was only like 40 years old, and he fell asleep. He fell asleep on, a, you know, on his home. But um, he suddenly, you know, was in a dream, but that felt too real for a dream. He was brought to in front of a Yama king, the king of the underworld in the in the Chinese Buddhist folklore, uh, 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 in Chinese or Indian uh, uh, folklore. We have Yama king, Yan Luo Wang, who judge. You know the life, uh, the the merits and faults of every person who passed. So this man has been brought in front of the Yama King when he was asleep, maybe dead, may, or maybe not. You know, if you define that by simply just you know not breathing, then maybe not. But you know, it's kind of like a dream, but not a dream, very too real for a dream. So he was there. He was in front of a, you know, the renowned Yama King, who respect the kind and you know. This, uh, do not like the evils. He make it very clear in his face. So he's like, okay, Mr. Wei, uh, you are here, you call upon here in this front of this court of um, karma to judge about your merits and faults of your life. So everyone, uh, he called the you know, staff, but the staff is actually spirits, to bring over the good that he did and the fault that he committed. So he first bought upon a cut and a cut of faults, you know, the penalties that he has incurred during his 40 years of lifetime and put it on that, you know, that's this, um, in, in front of a court of justice, this always have the, how to say, the weight, the scale. So you put it on the, on the fault side of the scale and obviously it's heavier because nothing else on the merit yet. So he put in the fault and it's like a truckload, a cutload of 
votes he has committed. Uh, and then on the left side, which is the married side, he, um, the King Yama also summoned the spirit's helper to, you know, the staff to bring forward the merit that he has committed in his lifetime. And there's only one against a cutload. So, you know, logically, the common sense, if we use it in, in this, uh, uh, this context, is, you know, it will be heavier, right? The, the folds. But when they start to wait, you know, weight it against each other, the merit is heavier, much heavier than the fault he has committed, even though quantity-wise, it's one against a cut load of faults, you know, documents. So he's baffled. I'm baffled too. Why? So he asked, like, you know, first thing, he has two questions. First question, why did I commit so much evil? I'm only 40 years old. I haven't reached 40, actually, you know. How do I commit so much evil? And he's like a normal person, you know, like in our sense, normal. Does not do any, you know, big bad or big good, not Cao Cao, also not Guan Yu. Uh, none of the legends. He's just a normal Confucius scholar, you know, day to day. And he said that, how, how can I commit so much evil? And King Yama answered, you don't need to do it. When you think it, it's already an offense. So here, a hundred offense is not actually exactly one hundred. A hundred offense is infinite. It can be infinite because your mind has infinite thoughts. So you can f commit a f infinite offenses at one time within a split of seconds. That's why it's important to take care of our brain, I mean, take care of our thoughts. So back to the point, you don't need to do it, you just need to think it. So it's like, oh. <laughs> and after that, um, he's like, okay, that got out of the way. I'm aware of it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. What about the weights? What happened with that? You know, I can see there's a lot of thought I've committed by thoughts, by action, but how come this one little slimy, like a toothpick in, uh, you know, piece of paper that records my marriage, it's much heavier than a cut load of thought I committed. King Yama say, yeah, you did one thing very good. Is, the one thing you did very good is when you, um, when the government of the time, the government of the day has um, planned a project, a infrastructure project that is not necessary. Actually, this is, you know, there are a lot of infrastructure projects that might seem grand, but it's not necessary. And this is, this is one of those um, projects that requires, you know, opening of mountain pathways and then building a bridge. Um, but he saw the cost is way too high because back then, remember, there's no machines. It's all man, human, you know, hand by hand. Uh, you have to go through everything manually, very manual. So he sees no value in spending so much of the people's hard-earned uh, money on this kind of um, infrastructure project. Uh, that, you know, first thing is cost a lot of money. Second thing is cost a lot of um, man, human power, uh, manpower. Uh, so he submitted a proposal to the emperor uh, to, to, you know, to, re uh, to reject this, um, to stop this project or to reduce the scale of this project. I think he wanted this project to, to be halted, you know, uh, maybe put it to a better use. But it was not accepted. So he replied, it was not accepted by the emperor, King Yama. Is that considered a good deed? He's like, well, if he accepted it, then your good deed will only get heavier. That means your, your reward, I mean, the, the merit that you have um, cultivated is even more than now. But even without, even, even your proposal is not accepted, your, your proposal is born out of your kind heart or your, your compassion towards the people. Uh, so you care about uh, others. Um, so this sincere and kind heart is already a merit. So it's quite obvious already. We we know that um, from this story. This story is actually quite well known in for those who have learned and uh, listened to the master's teachings uh, in this circle, the Chinese culture circle. But this story is also very um, universal in the way that. 
you know, before we do things, it's always thinking, right? Because we need to think about our action before we do, right? Uh, and and if we take care of that sprout, how can we say that uh, if we take care of the sprout in the beginning, then the result will be better. The, the result will be good. That goes without saying. If we take care of a tree sprout while it's just you know, break the soil, uh, give in ample space, ample um, oxygen, uh, time, ample space, ample support, fertilizer, then it will grow into a healthy tree. If we put a lot of those poisons or if we put a lot of those um, too much of water, too much of sunlight, you know, unbalanced, too extreme on, on one thing, then obviously it will wilt it or it will, it will be crooked when it grow into a big trees. So every action, every thing that happens to us has a cost, has a um, sprout. And the tiniest and minute of the sprout of our karma is in our thoughts. Um, taking care of thoughts is m very important above everything else. Um, if that part is taken care of, your speech and your action is not a worry. Because you wouldn't do something that you do not agree with, right? You do not agree with evil. You recognize that thing is evil. You just won't do it. In Buddhism, there's even a metaphor. Actually, not a metaphor. They actually, the Bodhisattva actually did that. Even they sacrificed their life, they would still hold on to their five precepts. That's how important. Your life is the result of five precepts. As a human, in Buddhism, in karma, in karmic terms, to be a human, you need to have five precepts. No killing, no stealing, no sexual misconduct. That means extramarital marriage or um, sexual conduct that is not in the right place, right time. Face of face, face to. Right place, right time, and right place. Venue. And then the... No lying. This no lying includes, you know, lying that you are arahat when you're not. Lying that you are the Buddha come again when you're not. Uh, these are big lies. Those lies that used to bait, respect, bait, you know, offerings. So this is what the five percent is. And the last one is no intoxicants. That includes wine, all the, you know, things that can make you lose your uh, control of your conduct. So these five precepts, uh, if held in the past passing mark, you are human. Um, so, in other words, if we take care of that sprout, then obviously our current life will get better. And that's the topic that everyone will and care, will always care about. How to get your life better than you are now. How to improve your quality of your life. Um, and how to avoid the misfortune that befalls upon you in forms of this COVID-19. 19, you know, or in terms of um, marry into a wrong partner, in a sense, uh, marriage, or get into a job that you felt trapped and everything is bad. Remember, everything happens to us is a reflection of our current state of mind. Um, it's like a mirror. And without going too deep in that, what we need to know is just like the first sentence they mentioned, it will all bounce back to us. Uh, everything happens to us is a reflection of what we did or what we have done in the past. And this gives us a venue to improve once we're aware of it, to get better and get better. It's a positive message, not sitting there and lying flat and let it run through you. So, Tang Ping, uh, that's a very common term nowadays. You lie flat and let things run through you. That's karma and everything. That's, even your life flat, you still get things fall upon you. So there's no point. Build your own life based on the right no, right, right understanding. This is the right understanding. This is the beginning of the right understanding. So let's go into the nitty gritty details because I already took almost 20 minutes for the intro. But I think it goes without saying it's important to have a proper um forward, prelude, before we go into the content. Otherwise, we, we lost the compass of it. Now, the, what is virtuous? What is good? 
what how do you say good? And we talk about walks the path of virtue, avoid the evil. Right? Because you wouldn't do something you don't agree with. You don't agree with evil, you wouldn't do it. Uh, you know this is virtuous, you would just do it. That's it. That's all it's all about. The hardest part is knowing what is, what is not. Obviously, there are another level that where you understand that the whole world is pre-evolved around karma. The so-called the things that goes wrong is because of the karma that was done. Hence, things goes wrong. If you want to write, you want to correct the situation, you have to correct the karma of the situation. Not just focusing on shoots and forgot about the roots. Shoots can only do so much. You know, you can make it beautiful and nice, but if the root is poison, it will still die. So that's the whole point of, you know, how deep you want to go. Where do you get started? So we will cover everything. So first we talk about the concept. Go to the root of the things. So once you understand what is happening, uh, you will not do what is causing you harm. And what is causing you harm is offenses. And what is the worst kind of offenses? The offenses that you committed in secret. Thinking that no one will know. It's easy. It's easy to get, uh, how to say, into the, um, it's easy to get into, um, how to say, your habit that you have occurred, in, incurred along uh, with time as you've grown, good or bad. So that's why habit is important. That's why we do learn about these way the conducts of being a good person, especially um, the youngest person, the earlier they understand, and if you do a good job at that, uh, you know, make them lively, make them alive, understand what is right, what is wrong. When they grow up with this foundation, they won't stray too far. You know, uh, they won't stray too far from the path. Uh, there's a saying in Chinese called the three years old, the conduct of a three year old will co decide his future, his future in. 80 years ahead. So conduct of a three-year-old will set the path until he turns 80. From the sprout, you can kind of see how it grows into it. Obviously, it can change. That's why we have learned about Liao Fan. We learned about Mr. Yu. Uh, he, they are all like 30, 20, 30. Uh, they, they, they change or at that time. So it's not too late any time. Even you are 16 now, it's still not too late. To make it easier, why not start right rather than trying to save it when it's too late or when it's already, you know, in disaster? So that's the, the concept if you still have a chance, you know, for next generation. So going back to this, what is proper? What is not? First thing of what is not proper is doing something offenses in secret, which we will know in the next chapter. I'll try to get to there by today at least. Um, and then we we'll understand that later about what offenses are there and how many of them are easily of um, omitted in secret. Now, he amassed merits and treats everything with gentleness and compassion. That's the core of a uh, cultivation. Um, I read uh, Master Ching Kong, or uh, one of the master said that the compassion is the core of our cultivation. All these techniques, including chanting Ami Tofo, talking about, um, you know, what should we do when we sit down in front of a, uh, when it's free, we, we sit in meditation and all that, is to cultivate your compassion. It's a tool to, to help others. It's a tool to generate body-mind. What is body-mind? Body-mind, the core of it is compassion. And with compassion, uh, and wisdom, you know, without um, wisdom, compassion will just be, you know, worldly love. It will be one of those emotional things that are good, but they are not complete because it can be disruptive. Um, with uh, wisdom without compassion, it will just be wit, like, you know, um, machine AI, they're smart, but wisdom, um, helps you uh, to apply these things correctly. So the point is, everything centers around gentleness and compassion. That's the, that's the prerequisites to learn the path of a sage or to have a better life. First, you need to have 
a heart of a goal. You need to have a kind heart. Um, some of us had it easily accessible. Some of us had it buried a bit deeper. Some of us um, might be buried much deeper. That's only the difference. Do not say that what, and I don't have any compassion. It's, it's just when it's buried deep enough, it felt numbing that you felt, you know, you know, I feel the indifference. You know, I don't think I have the energy for that. It's fine because currently we're in this situation where we're heavily directed by karma and our own action in the past um, because we are not aware of what is right and wrong. Uh, we are not aware of our true nature. Um, it takes time. But as long as you're aware and acknowledge at least in the very least that we have um, the ability and potential to get back uh, to our, you know, the most sincere part of ourself, then uh, we have, there are, no matter how hard it seems, we can work with that. If we're not acknowledging it, keep burying our self, our true heart, our true self, deeper and deeper. Uh, let me define what is true self first before you get diverted to many directions. True self can present in many forms but it does not leave the principle of, you know, sincerity, equality, right understanding, right awakening, uh, compassion, right awakening equals to, you know, full, perfect wisdom. Uh, and then the compassion. So, in the true self, there's no, there's no prejudice. There's no higher than you, lower than you. Everyone's equal. Everyone's unique, yet they are connected. The compassion came from that, you know. It's 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 like when you get to the deepest um, of the sea, everything is quiet and peace. Uh, all the waves above looks like a little dips from there. Same goes for this one. So that is true self, the core, and it was layered by many many of the habits that we have accumulated for not just this. Existent, but many existent in the past, and it will direct us now and our future. And our job is to, our agency in this, our part in this is to how how do how do we direct ourselves towards a better future? You know, with all these teachings helping us. So a person who has compassion and kindness, then we can work with his character and everything building up. So he was first have a loyalty to people places, community that nurtures him, his country, his parents, most important one, people who give him a life, right? person who cannot repay any gratitude cannot by any chance be a good person. person who forgets gratitude, who jumps at only opportunities and forget what I mean opportunity as in overly opportunistic in a way that they forgot their root, forgot their, um, what do I say, forgot, forgot to be gratitude. Uh, you know, at that expense, basically sacrificing their soul for what seems to be um, uh, a great fortune or a great opportunity, great power, is not a per by not by no definition a good person. So a person who is good must oh like you know you can see they will always remember be grateful for those people who helped him to where he, or where she, him or her to where she is or he is today so f where do we start start with the places you live in start with people who has been with you since you're born your parents your siblings uh, your cousins grandpas grandmas those are the core of your life, right? In the in the beginning, and then you grow into family, yeah, friends, partners, or wife and husbands, and teachers, students, classmates. So he cultivate himself and reform others. When he's alone, he will always look at his own thoughts, his own actions, his own speech, everything he do. He will be aware. He will. Uh, how do I say, at, be at peace with himself. To be to do so is like what Leo Fan 
and Master Yu, Mr. Yu has done. Um, these two scenarios is where they encounter hurdle and they start to turn around their life, you know, trying to find a solution. So, so, so do us. Most of the time, we only start to look inwards. Not everyone, but I think a lot of us only start looking inwards when we encounter issues that does not go well. When things go well, we don't see it, right? We enjoy that moment. We ride the wave. But when the wave calms down, we fall or we go back to that ordinary part of our life. That's when we start looking inwards. And looking inwards is the first step of cultivation. You know, you can't cultivate without knowing where you are and where you would go or without seeing the merits and the fault that you have done or you have thought. Start from there. Then when you start working on it, your actions will influence people around you, the younger especially. They can see what you're doing. You don't have to say anything. Just by what you did and people spread it and what they heard will be their model. Not necessary. Some people just don't care. But <laughs> the point is, it will influence someone in some space, places. So that's why those are double motivations to improve from yourself. It's easy to just be relaxing and let that monkey loose, that wild horse loose inside when you just, your bubble is only that small. But when you open up and you see how much you have influenced people around you, especially your siblings, your, your cousins, younger ones especially, or even your parents, your elders' generation, you know, their grandparents, especially those that care about you, they will influence them the most. And that is why this is the core of cultivation. If you care, you will change. If you don't care, you will just, you know, let yourself rot. A person who rot themselves, um, first they harm themselves, but most importantly, also harm people around them. You know, letting yourself rot is also a harm, harmful thing because um, you are burying yourself, your true self that is limitless, that is not restrained by, you know, karma, but, you know, fully aware, fully compassion, that true self is buried. So don't do that to, to yourself or don't let yourself be in that part. So back to this, this is the significance of self-cultivation. And then self-cultivation will naturally reform other people. There are chances you could give a speech a little bit or maybe there are little conversations after meal that you know slowly reveals who you really are. As you contact, you will reveal part of yourself. They will be part of you. And hence, if you have something good, positive, that you accumulated in insight, what is positive? Compassion, wise, uh, patience, um, long-term thinking, um, uh, you know, kind, care, all this good stuff, um, uh, resilience, all this good stuff that you have, when you start to share with others, there was, or even you do things, you emit the energy, people will receive it, knowing or unknowingly. And that's how you reform one person, two person, three person. And they change, they reform five person, six person. That's how community change. He shows concern for the welfare of the lonely, widowed and orphaned. That's natural. Is they are falling into the lower bracket, not lower bracket, as in the unfortunate part of the society. Because a healthy family, you know, or a healthy society always have a system that um, healthy family, you know, builds a healthy society. And if, you know, in this part, it's either too lonely or because they're elderly and they lost their you know, loved ones, partners, or they, you know, the, the families, they no longer stick together or, you know, uh, losing their parents at a young age. So they need more care. Um, a healthy society would do that. And it was built by, you know, healthy family and built by self-cultivation uh, and reforming people around you. 
So that's natural. And he will respect the elderly, cares for the young, does not hurt or damage even the little insects, animals, grasses and flowers. It's all spun from compassion. Right? So this is showing you the perspective of a person who has deep into that um, element of, of compassion, of the true self. This is what they see. You know, if we felt a shock, like, oh, that's how, that's how we should be, then congratulations, you have found your way back home, your own home, you know. Uh, if you say, it is, this is what it should be, and this is how I live my life, congratulations, you're on your way, keep going, keep going. There are, that's a lot to do, but you're on the right path. If you're like, what is this? This is like in this new movie that never goes through. <laughs> keep, uh, you know, that happens, you know, not everyone has the, 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 the contact, you know, have opportunity to contact in something good. Sometimes they were clouded with all that negative things happen to them, the bad people, maybe the upbringings and all that. Um, we're seeing a lot of movies, right? Uh, you know, all, all these you know, human rights activists, civil rights activists, especially in the United States, you know, they went through all the discrimination, went through all the hatred, but yet they stand strong. They unite their own communities. They bring the best part out of the worst part of humanities. Why? Because to do otherwise, you only fall into the realm of terrorism, or hatred, hatred, uh, and that's goes. That's no way to live. You know, it's hard to bear hate. To be honest. So back to here. This is what we trying to do here is to give a perspective. What Kai Shang, El Seltzer one tried to tell you, a person who are really compassionate, this is how they see the world, uh, you know? And even this environment. So we have all the environmentalists coming out and say, we need to take care of, stop throwing rubbish everywhere. We need to reduce carbon. Those are correct, but this does not touch the root. The root of it is that mindset, you know, that really cares about um, people around you first and then cares about the environment you live in, that kind of mindset, if it's um, there, then we won't have a problem like this nowadays. We won't have a problem of people chasing profit at no bottom line. Because um, their world is a bit bigger than just the figures. Give you three billions like Warren Buffett, but when he passed away, how many billions can he bring? Nothing. Master Wuxing, which is the um, abbot of the Amitabha NSW, wise abbot, um, he once said that, uh, well, actually, he quote others, but the point is, you know, all this fighting, all these arguments, all this, you know, bickering, what are they for? What did they get in the end? A piece of land, no more than seven feet if you're tall, if you're LeBron James or something. Maybe even bigger. Um, give you eight feet, all right? Give eight feet, all right? Eight feet piece of land. What's that for? Your final resting place. If you don't choose cremation, if you choose cremation, it's even smaller. That's what I want, though. But anyway, the point is that small piece of land. That's what you will get in the end. Yes, I'm not. Uh, you know, when you hear hear here, it's not me saying that. You know, flying flat and just wait. No, the point is. Um, in the end, it will be like that. That's the fact. No one can say no. All right? We start from there. And then you look back in your life. What have you done in your life? What have you left behind for the other people who has to continue in this existence? And if all you do is just chasing profit at the expense of the society, what would they look at you when they have the problem of, say, food shortage or you know all these um, imbalances that was contributed by a selfish action of yours, what would that be? You know? So do you want to leave behind something like that? Something negative like that? Or do you want to leave behind a society that is more compassionate, more reasonable in distribution of wealth or in the mindset, you know, more balanced, less of those um, chasing profit and no expense, or less of those li qi in Chinese, hatred, conflicts, 
and that takes a lot of patience. That's why it's patience is also another important thing. Um, patience was born out of compassion. Without compassion, you would not be patient. A mom who does not, a mom, you know, might get angry, might get annoyed, but she will not stop care for her child, no matter how much the child has harmed her or harm, no matter how much temper she thrown or how much trouble the kid has caused, the parents will not give up. Why? Why do you think that? Because love. Compassion is a form of love, but higher. You know, less emotional, but more wisdom. Um, but it's still a foundation of love. Uh, compassion is this kind of parental love. The best, closest uh, way to describe it. So same, patients come out from there. So this um, person who are good, you know, he walked the path of virtue. What is the path of virtue? Being kind. And how do we be being kind? These are the actions of being kind. All right. He expands further and further and further and further. He has saved those in danger, helped those in needs. Harbor no thoughts of envy, feel joys at other prosperity, and empathize with the loss of other people. Always want the best for others. Always want the good for others. Simple. Their wish is simple. They wish that the whole, if I can eat well, drink well, sleep well, I wish everyone can eat well, drink well, sleep well. Using that kind of compass, guide everything you do. Your life is big. I mean, how can you not have friends? How can you not have a good life? You know? And when you see that from that perspective, you know, you don't hate the evil, you pity the evils. Then you can give your left cheek for them to slap after they slap your right cheeks. That's how Jesus did that, right? Same, compassion. All sages is like from there. If they don't have that, they are not sage. No matter what religion you're in. If it falls out of that range, then it's not the right religion. They're always based on compassion and then everything else. The method, the tactic they employed is just to um, on that circumstances, on that kind of custom, that kind of society. But the core is always there. Always want to help. Reserve for himself little. He does not publish faults and scandals of others. Why? Reputation is a big thing in our society. If you have no good reputation, then how can you survive? How can you loan a house using our, you know, everything with data and everything? If you have bad record, you know, how can you have a proper life, right? And does it even help that person? Will that person change their habits or change their behavior? If we keep saying that this guy is bad, this guy is bad, this guy is bad, keep yelling, will that change anything? That's why wisdom is important. Seeing things as it is. Remove that layer of reaction for reaction's sake. Just look at that clearly, cold, understand, uh, look at it thoroughly. That would not change anything. It will only make them either, you know, um, shall, uh, retreating back into their bad habit again, or even worse, just to prove that, you know, so what? So you say that I'm bad and all that, so I'm going to prove to you what really bad is. Do we want that kind of person? Uh, we have terrorism. Tell me, how did that happen? This is kind of like a, like a, like a, it's like a big reflection that we need to have. Because we don't have a society like that, then we can't live. We can't continue to live. That's why there's so many offenses here. Even in ancient times, they use this. Because why? Because it's easy to fall into that. Crimes and offenses. But the good things is only this much. Why? Because you don't need much in the good things. It's all about thinking for others. So act with modesty in regards to his own merit. That means he don't brag. You know, he don't brag just for bragging. You know, he, he knows this is good. He do it as best as he can. And he does not flaunt it. What is made of gold will shine on its own. You will not, uh, or, you know, in some, maybe it fell into fire, it will still not melt, or it will still not um, uh, fear of fire or any, any, any traversities. 
same if you have your merits if you really you have if you really think then you don't feel of anything to happen to you you don't need to show off beyond what is needed maybe in interview yes you should but other than that you don't need to so a person will always know how to keep um, low profile you know only use it when you need it and also he does not publish the fault of others because he's aware that I too has fault if I'm in his circumstance will I be better than him maybe not can you be so sure that if you're in circumstances of maybe someone like you know in the power as powerful as Stalin or Hitler I'm going to very extreme cases in that kind of mindset in that kind of society we'll be able to go against the tide fight against it that's why compassion is important important to have that mindset I'm not saying I'm not telling you to empathize with that bad guy or something I'm telling you why things go south most of the time is contributed it was uh, uh, to that kind of group think that means you think without without you know this wisdom you just follow 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 and if someone's twisted mind brings this group of um, you know mindset this group of people towards the extreme then tragedy happens that's why we need a lot of these good people in this world you know a good people does not follow blindly he will see what is right and what is wrong he will stand by it uh, and 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 he's not confrontational not necessary unnecessary confrontational and he does not need to brag it's just like it's like I'm talking about Bible or all this because this is merits this came out of a meritorious people all good books talks about that prevents evil encourage virtues he reserved for himself little and gives much and reacts with equanimity to slights and slanders <clears throat> so a good person do not um, allow evil to fester in the sense that they do not allow that selfishness that greed the hatred to grow and to do that you need to encourage virtues to replace it you know or you know um how do you break through the evils? Showing what is right, showing what is virtuous, and when you when you show the path of virtues and its good results, people will naturally shun the evils. They will know what is not right. Um, this is a simplistic way of saying it, right? I mean, real life, you know, it, it's very messy. But if we do not um, depart from that, uh, this principle. Then we will amass parrots. We will get clearer on, on our life and we'll be able to get out of, um, you know, go through this life with relative uh, peace. Uh, you get what you want, what you need easily, and you'll be able to give it away as well easily. Uh, and this grows on and on and on. Your merits get better, your fortune gets better in forms of many forms of fortunes, not just money. Oh, sorry, in terms of partner, in, in, in terms of uh, you know, good career, good partners, and uh, in, in, in cultivation, it requires so many merits uh, to get one thing launched through. Um, so merits is important, and you are, you, you are accumulating it using these methods. Okay, he reserved for himself little, gives much, and react with equanimity to slights and slander. He does not abuse, favor, bestow, or nor does he give with strings attached. Mm, I like the way they translate. Lastly, he does not regret what he has given others. So basically, do not uh, take advantage of others. <clears throat> he do not publish the faults and scandals of others. We talk about that. Modesty, yes, prevents evil, encourages virtues. Reserve for himself little, but gives much and reacts with equanimity. Why do you think that? Like why why does but how how can one does do that? How can one do that? You know, we always have easily um we've seen it's easy to fall into that, you know. 
you know, say clearing sales, you know, while it lasts. Black Friday, everyone line up, squeeze into that store and try to grab the stuff they want. I'm not saying I'm above that. You know, I might be one of those. I, I was one of those people, actually. Grab that too, not as crazy as it was in TV, but, you know, trying to buy things while it lasts. Everyone's trying to get something for themselves. Always want to get good things for themselves or their loved ones. It's understandable. But to do the opposite, to give other people what you want or to able to let it go uh, and only take what exactly what you need, just enough to get by or something like that, takes a lot of, you know, of um, immersion into the teachings. Because these teachings does not... Um, attract your eyeballs, all right? it attracts your heart, your mind. That takes a long time to sink in. What Master Ching Kong did for 60 years is that. Takes a long time to sink in. The, the current thing you see in TikToks and all that, Facebook, YouTube, most of the things, they attract your eyeballs. They attract your eyeballs. What does it mean? Senses only, five senses, right? color, you know, the, the the music, you know, make it very beat, on the beat, off the beat, everyone likes it, very cool, uh, very sexy woman, uh, very good um, presentations, those are eyeballs attracting stuff, those are easily um, capturing your attention, but also easily losing it, but things like these teachings sink in so deep, no matter what happened, you will not move. If you got to that level, congratulations. You will not falter, no matter what happened. That takes a lot of tests and tribulations to get there. That's why it's, it's hard to get one sage, one person who are fully awakened with what they are, what, they can, they, what, can, what can they do. That means a person who fully understands themselves and others, or sage. You mean by you zhou ren shen xiang de ren among millions and millions of billions and billions of people. It's even hard to get one out of that statistics wise. And generations, you know, how many thousand years of human history, how many sage we have? Not much. This is um, the world we, we are in right now. So lastly, he does not regret what he has given others. He does not abuse favor bestowed nor does he give his string attached. Favor. People who owe him a favor. Maybe he helped someone. Yeah. He do not take advantage of that. Only use them when it's necessary. Or sometimes he doesn't even think about it. You know. But remember, karma always follows you like the the shadow follows your body. When he needs it, they will have be help. Especially the people who him help will some form some method come back and help him back. Just like what I mentioned about the Italian priest, and many many cases in 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 ancient or in future, if you do that, uh, do without asking for favor, um, asking for anything in return, or just do it earnestly. Uh, only take what you need, uh, without any strings attached. Be honest, be open. You will find it's easier to get help when you need it, um, because, you know, opposite. I mean. You attract what you are. You attract the type of partner that uh, compatible with your kind of person you really is. Um, you attract the kind of job that your worth is in terms of skills, in terms of attitudes, uh, in terms of obviously your past karma. That that's also part of it, um, obviously. Um, so. If we are not the kind of person, if we if we cultivate that kind of mindset, then uh, it's easier for us to uh, do that um, because we know good things will come to you. If you take a lot right now that you don't need, you just want it. It's called greed, right? This one get rid of greed. This one also get rid of greed. These are the ways to get rid of greed. Get rid of greed. What did they earn? Everything. Greed only get you something. Like you greed for you know more wealth and everything. You only that means you 
you hoard this kind of wealth and you do not want to share it, you do not want to help the society and anything, you just want to enjoy, that means you spend it, spend your karma, good karma. The reason you can get wealth is because you have good karma and you spend it away like that. It's like spending your bank account without putting into investment and without you know, enlarging your portfolio. But I'm talking about real karma. If, if we hold the wealth and everything and not helping people in need or people who came for your help, seeking your assistance because you have the power of wealth, then, you know, once you spend all your merits, you have to pay the debt, something like that. Um, so, once we get rid of greed, we're able to do this and we'll be able to give more. That's why the importance of understanding the power of giving is always at the front line of every religion. They start to teach them, give a lot. That's why there was all charity work and all that. Because give is the foundation of wealth. When you give more, everyone keeps giving, then everyone is sharing. And how can this society not be better? Does not abuse favor, react with equanimity. That means when you face impolite remarks, that's the slight, there's a light way to say it, um, but it's slight, right? Or even worse things, slander, which is very impolite remark, or rude, or even downright humiliation, or even making a video, twisting everything you say, just to you know achieve a certain target, a, a kind of motive they have. When you do, where, whereas you're not, you did not mean this, or you did not even mention that. They just cut part of your video and put it in the YouTube, and they say that what you say is like this. That's what happened to Master Chinko for all these years. We use him back as an example because he just left us um, recently. But the point is, equanimity. How you react to this thing? Impolite remark and a very humiliation, uh, humiliating. Um, Words, actions, equanimity, peace. You do not get moved by that. Then congratulations, you pass another test. It's called test of not being angry. Test of not being greedy. Test of not being angry. Congratulations, you have gone through the two biggest devils, or what to say, two biggest issues for cultivators to overcome which is these two, greed and hatred. He does not abuse favor, bestow, nor does he give his strings attached. That's greed. He does not allow, give in to his greed. Lastly, he does not regret what he has given others. That's also greed. So tell me, tell me, greed is the basis of the world. Right? We have said that greed is the motivation to progress. You know, because if you want to greed for more resource, then you go and work hard. I, in the, some form, we do have that. You know, we we'll greet after uh, material comfort. So obviously, we want to work hard to get there. It's understandable. Um, if we want to go very deep in that and want to go to the Buddha level, then no, we can't have that. But in our level, right now, we're not going to talk about that too deep. We're just saying that we need to control it to a level, reduce it, lessen it, lighten it, make it, how to say, manageable. Just only, only, only ask what's in your um, needs, right? The ones cut down a little bit more, more and more and more. Uh, well, on on the if you look on the other side, if what you have you share with others, there's no reason you won't be able to enjoy what you have, right? If you just only enjoy with yourself by yourself or attach to the concept of hoarding. Uh, the more money in my account, the better. The kind of mindset. Then you will never um, be able to expand your life uh, horizon. That means what you, the whole life is only evolved. There's a Chinese word called so tai nu, slave to money. Money slaves. Or maybe slaves to power. Can there's a lot of names on that one. Slaves to whatever you desire on. Slaves of desire. And there's a whole point of Buddha coming into this world. There's a whole point of all these great monks trying to tell us is you do not want to be a slave. You want to be a free person. 
how do you be truly free? You know, truly free. I'm not saying all those political slogans. I'm talking about real freedom, free from life and death, free from, in the very least, your own habits, repeating mistakes that you have committed in the past. That's a very important question we need to ask. So this is the way to do it. By such conduct, an individual becomes virtuous. Those are virtuous command the respect of people, men, and earn the blessings of the heavens. So those are results. Those are the shadows. Remember the shadows. They come back. You know. So none of this is cutting into whatever you earn. In fact, you're expanding it. Using a modern term, it's called investment. However, that's one thing we need to remind ourselves. If it's not, if we think like it's just simply for reinvestment, it's still based on greed, selfishness, and it's not virtuous. It's just a metaphor. A metaphor means it's close enough, but it's not there. What is really there is you truly are called gentleness and compassion. That's the mindset. Just for the sake of metaphor, all these things that you do, you will not get it immediately. Just like long-term investment. You don't get your money straight away. You get it 10 years, 20 years. Slowly, gradually, right? Long, we use a more, another term, long-term gratification instead of instant gratification. You don't want to get gratified straight away. And I have trouble in that. That's why I always jump into game and all that, only to find myself not enough sleep. Anyway, the point is, instant gratification can only get you this much. Long-term, you delay your gratification until the very end. Then you get a lot more, right? But you need to go through all that patience, discipline. This goes for us as well, cultivators. If we spend our merits right now, it's called short term. That means we enjoy what we have now. That's it. But if you accumulate this until the very end, use that. Just like the Amitabha Sutra say, one does not have, one cannot have insufficient good roots, merits, uh, and conditions to go to Pure Land. You accumulate that with all the interest rates and all that on top just to use it on that one moment. If you have that discipline, I don't have that yet. Then congratulations. You know, why? What's the, what's the reward? The reward is you get out of this hamster circle. Have you heard of this hamster wheel? You get off the hamster wheel. We're all in hamster wheel, guys. We're all in hamster wheel. Remember that. We repeat this thing again and again or even worse or better. That's it. It's a, a wheel a hamster wheel or a gilded bird cage, a gilded cage or hamster wheel, right? No matter how, what quality the wheel is, you know, in hell, it, it was made, made of knife. In heaven, it was made of soft pillow and gold. It's still a wheel. You trap that. A cage, be it the cage in dungeon, prisons, or a beautiful gold-made, quality-made cage is still a cage. You're not free. We're trapped. To be free, we need merits. We need wisdoms. And this grow from compassions. Why? Why do you think we're trapped in the first place? Because we lose ourselves. What is our self? What is our true self? A person who can call our self, self in Chinese war, can control. If you can control your life, and death. Say, I want to go now. Bye-bye. If you can, then you have found your true self. Otherwise, all these are just conditions. You're just subject to your previous actions. Do I say there's no free will, no agency? I'm not going too deep in that. But the point is to have free will. That means you can overcome life and death. Right? That's the first, first question. I don't want to talk about all that other side. Life and death. Can you control it or not? No. We can't get through this. So the rest, you know, all this favor that bestowed upon us, disaster that fell on, on us, then we need to start understanding the law and all that to realize, okay, this is because, you know, the past karma. And how did this begin? Indian Bujie, not aware. Unawareness leads to this. That's why to get out of this cage, we need to cultivate enough energy to get out. That's why long-term gratification this is, this is what it is about. And 
this helps us to get into it. Obviously, when you're in the operation of it, in the deep, in the meat of it, you feel happy. You get the reward already. Your life is bigger. Your material may be lesser, but your life is just starting to get better. This is how a better life is. It's not you get a lot of comfort, material comfort only. That's important to you know to have a livable environment and, and comfortable. Yeah. But how much more comfortable do you need to be, right? The real comfort comes from actually looking at people around you who live well as well. That's important. Um, that's how a good person will always think. And that happiness came from sharing it. And, and then it gets more happier. Um, my happy is not just purely emotional. It's just a peace of mind. That's what I call happiness. Really peace of mind. Like able to kneel for without all the worries. That's the happiness, not not laughing every day and then like Robin Williams. Why, what, what, where did he end up? So suicide. Not being not being sensitive. Okay. But why I mean by happy is not laughing every day. Laughing is good, but you need to solve your own problem first. If being serious, being prudent can get yourself out of this gilded cage, then that's the happiness for you. If you can truly laugh at life and death without getting moved by it, then I can say you are truly happy. So back to the point. These are the conducts of a person. And a man becomes virtuous. Those who are virtuous will command respect of others, performing others. They respect this person. Naturally, you, if in the presence of someone who are virtuous, who really are thinking of others, obviously we felt a sense of reverence. This whole point of reverence came from. You know, reverend, why, why people call you venerable? Why people call you reverent? Because your mission is to serve others. Hence, you command the respect. Why we call, Why we, do we pay so much, um, like say in the country, Mr. President? Why do we say, you know, why do we respect this title? Because this is a title of a public servant, a person who served the country. If they really respect that title and the person who got the position and trying to do their best, they demand respect. So so goes to these virtuous people. And naturally, everything will come, good things will come, protect them, fortune and success, follow them, digest them, avoid them. So this is your, this is the path towards um, fortunes. Heavenly rebirth is open to them for us, rebirth in pure land. Those wish to be reborn as a demigod should accumulate 300 virtuous deeds, while those wish to attain heavenly rebirth should amass 1,300 good deeds. Those are just results. Like I say, roots are done well, taken care of, growing well, and then you, the fruits be bore. Obviously, you need to set your target first. You know, If you aim for the demigod, good on you. Keep doing on 300 virtuous deeds. You'll be one of the demigods. But remember, uh, no deeds can come without action. And no action can come without proper thoughts. Otherwise, you will just blindly do things without knowing what is good and what is bad. So start from, you know, understanding what it is, mingli, and then act on it. So this is the example of a person who are virtue, the kind of attitude they have. Not taking advantage, not being angry at someone treating them with um, disrespect on, or you know, uh, in, uh, with mal malice, you know, in face of malice, he's at peace. Um, do not see the fault of others and enlarge it. Understand the faults. We're trying to advise, but if you can't, it's fine. You know, he does not spread it. You encourage good deeds instead of bad deeds. That's how you work in social education. I need to open the window. Just a sec, sorry. Sorry, I didn't. I uh, kind of light the incense, so I light the candle. Ends up robbing my oxygen. Anyway, it's teaching me that my life is relying on every single breath. Just like what Buddha said. Sorry for dragging this along, but I think we should have a nice review because things going back to normal. That means we will be able to do this neatly every two weeks. Um, 
uh, so we won't have a big gap like this happen again uh, hopefully for foreseeable future in these few months so this sums up a person who are practicing good karma um, would I always say that in the beginning he will always share the karma first share what is moral what is right what is karma before he goes into the real met like very deep teachings this is how he start for us and this is how all Buddha, Buddha and Bodhisattvas begin their journey without understanding karma there's no way you can operate in Buddhism not just Buddhism your life everything uh, Buddhism is about awaking someone so no matter what labor you put on as long as you're living as long as you're existing the laws governing this assistance needs to be known before we cloud it with a lot of this kind of perspective and confusion of real life we need to get the principle right first get the blueprint right first once the blueprint is right we can go and complex it a bit understand how how it came to be but it does not leave the foundation once the foundation is bright when you start building that house i'm using metaphor now building the house you start to see the issues the problems how do you solve it those are methods the result is to build a house complete it so for us to build our build, to 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 begin embarking our journeys we need to know how to be a good person first what is a good person what is a role model and the role model is one who always care and gentle and care about others the action will get kinder and kinder if you're not now it's fine that means you're honest and start from here you start being kind begin with people who you should be kind of towards right your parents your your the friends that cares about you people who care about you begin with these people first it's not that hard isn't it they already care about you. They already, you know, put their, uh, you know, worry about you and, and really, really, you know, think of you. Do the same. And then use that towards a stranger. So this is how your character built. How, how you improve your character. To see someone, to really see someone, how they really are, you need to see them outside the sight of others. And, Look at how they treat the strangers. Like outside the public eyes or outside the, you know, the people they know and look at how they treat a stranger. That's how you know that person's character is. Takes time. And that's it. That's it for the chapter two. Chapter two. Um, because this one is more on me trying to share it with people so it will be one way in terms of communications um, I might not go too deep in there because um, for now it's explained pretty clear we can have examples but I felt that we need to get the logic right first and then we can talk about what is um, actually happening uh, the impact of it uh, and then for us to think about it if that echoes with anything that happens to us, we can share it in the upcoming youth group session. That's the logic behind. So section three encompass the just telling you what we have learned in youth group so far, the um, crimes and offenses. So we already mentioned what is bright, what is good. So now here they have seventy three. If I keep scrolling down, we will scroll up to seventy or eighty, eighty three, I think, uh, of crimes and offenses. Each of them is like a like I said, the, the, the set of law, rule, um, some of them are straightforward, some of them are not. What we need to know is those are grouped together uh, by, I think, by one of the masters, Master Ching Kong or Master Li. Um, he grouped together and say categorized them for our ease of our understanding. Those are, those are the offenses. They encompass from personal, individual, to career, to you know when you're in power in charge of a group in charge of some important departments finance and all that or in uh, in terms of relationship as well uh, in, or towards the natural towards the gods towards everyone so so a person's life is not isolated individual 
is always connected to everything. So when your heart is right, everything is right. Everything is right. You will only get better as you learn to let go more and more of your um, narrow-mindedness, selfishness, selfishness, yeah, and all that. You know, the the open up, and your life will get better. You get freer, and you get less um, fear on negative circumstances because you're able to stand on your ground. You're able to be more resilient because you have a positive outlook on life or in the very least you, you're realistic but you always um, do not see things too cynically um, because people who go into that side of thoughts always um, tend to you know how to say they do not have a guide right guide towards that that's why karma is important to talk about even more important than morals and virtues for this society for our current uh, life because with karma we can instantly know what is what to avoid and what to follow and then we bring in the moral and virtues then it's not a problem we're willing to willing to follow it willing to be patient mm. so I think I over uh, I took a little bit out of your time um, Auntie Jensen so I think I'll end it here to harbor wishes, thoughts, and disregard one conscience, act contrary to what is fair and reasonable. Um, sounds pretty straightforward. Put it in context, though. You know, let it sink in a bit. What is fair and reasonable? Always in the mission statement of every company, every country, every sworn in presidency, or every sworn in, uh, you know, important duties. But how many people actually act according to it? Fair and reasonable. How many people was drowned out by the realities you know, in terms of bureaucracies, power relationships? I studied that. So many things has been swiped. All these good things has been swiped out. All these three, these three things are talks about maliciousness, you know, things that are hidden inside. And that kind of attitude, secretly plotting to hurt the good and plight, maliciously dishonest to one's superiors and parents paying their backs, accountabilities, misguided understanding of strength, strength, you know, Bully is a strength, you know. Using your military power to bully a nation, a weaker nation, is a strength. That's understanding. That's the kind of misguided understanding. See how much influence it has on not just your family, but you know, on nations. In future, when you colonize Mars and all that, and you encounter a different civilization, same thing happens. But I'm not going too far. The point is, what is strength? And, and how do we, you know, despite this world, how do we direct ourselves towards the guideline? How do we stay conscientious? Right? How does one become cruel? Why would one want to hurt good and kind? So these are the thoughts we can bring in and maybe put in examples, real life examples, or bring historical one, maybe uh, if I remember, of this teaching. These are these are very good thinking. Oh, these three sentences already point out a lot of sort of like deep questions that relates to us, not just sit there and ponder, but also it actually guides, influence an organization, it influence your life, influence the life around you, your family. Uh, your children's school life, you know, if the kids thinking strength is getting numbers and bully a small one, then that's it. Bye bye. Say goodbye to our society. No, like what is strength? And why would one be cruel? And how the strength and cruel brought together? This in Chinese, ren zuo chan hai, give it, a, it, it reflects the cold heart. How can one be cold heart? Everyone born such a cute little baby. So cute. Like, you know. And how did one 
turn from that cute little baby into Hitler. How the one from that cute little baby into you know Hopot, someone who commit genocides. How does one do that? Has to do with strength, misguided understanding of strength. And all this inter like international to international. How did they think about this? You know, as being a strong military means strength. Yes, you can suppress others, you can colonize others and all that, but one day one day one day bounce back. And will this be a good example for those uh, who were bullied by you? And what's the consequences? Think of terrorism. Think of the way that the hatred they have born as a result of a misguided use of strength. So this is a twisted part. So what is the actual part of strength in our true nature? What are the examples we can think about? In history, right, in a role model, think of those people who go to the worst part of the society, not worst part, the worst, um, the most misfortune part of society, Mother Teresa maybe. Is she not a strength with strength? Is she not with strength? Remember, she has to go through all that stench, smells, go through all that toughness conditions and to contribute so many things for so long in think of master ching kong who bore through all this misunderstanding towards him especially the thing he's trying to promote the sutra people are adopting his sutra is he not with strength what carries one and keep doing it for 60 years or what carries a person who do keep doing good deeds for decades. That's strength, isn't it? See, the real thing is always more subtle, always more natural, and always felt empowering rather than suppressing. That's what we call strength. We need to redirect every single terms that we put in the label in current society and ask the question, what is strength? What is Finest, and what is not, what is fair, what is just. Those are the reflections to ourselves as well. If it touches your heart, then dig deeper. Why, why does it touch my heart? And how do I be that person? Example, good example. So I would like to end it here. With this in our thoughts, um, a right understanding is more than anything else. 正见, 正直正见. With that, because I talk about thoughts, right? The thoughts decides everything. As per the example of Mr. Wei, his one good thoughts over uh, powered his um, his um, his one very good thoughts overpower all that splinter. Uh, wandering thoughts, you know, selfish thoughts. We all have that. But if you can concentrate together when it matters, or not just every day, you know, just a little bit, a little bit, you know, think a little bit more of others. I'm not telling you to let go of your house as Master Ching Kong did, let go of all that house that people have accumulated. Master Xiao has mentioned, right? And I always mention about Master Ching Kong, how easily he let go three temple only to get back bigger and bigger for his platform from a small little Taipei temple into a bigger Singapore temple all right and a house worth 10 million Singaporean dollars 10 million might eat by each and one 10 million Singaporean dollars higher than Australian currency think about that what kind of house you can buy in Sydney just, just to give you how easily he let go the greed to Australia finally but then he did, he did not stay there and enjoy, you know, even though he was sent a citizenship by the government. He still go, go to where? When he go to Australia, he also go to the UN. So his platform is becoming bigger and bigger. This is a life example of a person who let go and let go and let go and 
the fortune just keep chasing even more intense than before. That's how you do good things. You, the lesser you think about yourself, the bigger the world will think about you. The lesser you think about the benefits, the bigger the, the world will take care of your benefits. Even you die, in Buddha, in the, the karma, in the sutra says, Seru da huo, bu in yi hui. Even when you fall into the fire, hits, whatever the things happen, MH4743, the plane's falling down, if you can hold on to the Amitabha, that is the kindest thought of all. Strength. I'm talking about strength. You know, this, just by bringing up this example, it brings entire energy back to you, back to me, at the very least. Why? It's strength. It's true nature. Strength connects to your true nature. Strength is not this one. Or rather, why is this one more powerful than this one? Because this one accumulates, unite everything. That's strength. But if you use this to help, um, how do I say it? Yeah, anyway. Without going too much. So, yeah, that's it. we we'll leave it at there. You know, open up thoughts. Um, and I hope that from this little room, from that little room, we grow into a bigger bigger, bigger understanding. Hopefully it will pass down to generations to come. It will become a sort of a mainstream thinking or replacing the misguided thoughts. Because this thing never go away. It's just hiding under the radar because so many emphasis on what is not right. People was like used to the wrong example, the twisted version. And hence they group think it's easy to group think, trust me. It's, you just sit in the environment, everyone thing like that, you just follow. That's why strength pulls you back. Right understanding pulls you back. I'm not telling you to be confrontational and or the fight or, you know, that's not right. Always at peace. Someone like Master Ching Kong, someone like, um, you know, Dalai Lama, someone like um, Buddha, always at peace, you know. They, they are strong but they, do, they don't come as brutish they're always gentle and kind but they're strong mate they're strong when you live next to them you might you know be tired and then he still stand there and keep talking or keep doing things that his job that's the strength of compassion compassion is not weak it's powerful it goes through all the it can carry you through you know a lot of people might suicide at that kind of uh, pressure, but this person carries through. Talking about Hai Xian, Master Hai Xian, back in Cultural Revolution, so many well learned individuals getting pinpointed, getting re humiliated and bullied because everyone could think. But Master Hai Xian, what did he do? Plant the trees, plant the crops. You can't chant Amitofo, he, he has wisdom. He used, well, you can't hear me thinking, right? I don't think I have that technology even now. So I'm just Amitofo when, I, when I'm planting. And he is came in from an uneducated background as a farmer. No, wait, he is actually have education. But he does not know words. He was not able to go into school. So he, he, he's used to this m menial labor. And everyone's like, oh my God, you know, he worked harder than us. He keeps saying that, Gai zhao, gai zhao, you want to be, you know, like those land, take it from the rich and give it to the poor, and this person do it better than you without using violence. Mate, is Buddhism passive? No. They use example, role model. This is how traditional culture works. It's gentle. It's kind. That's strength. They are not separate. A lot of people thinking strength means you need to have all the six packs and look big and brutish. But did you see those big and Buddhist people have a very soft and kind heart as well? If you can see through them, they will get softened. They will, they will, they will not needing to do that. They will just be a normal human. Obviously, they have the advantage physically. They still can help people uh, in their own capacities. But that's not the point. The point is, it comes up here and then he talks about all that. All right. So I would like to wrap it up here. Um, kind of understand why Master Ching Kong likes to talk about Dharma because it helps him to understand his Dharma better. Uh, this one is uh, my little um, understanding uh, towards everyone. If they have um, say anything they are offending or they are not correct, uh, please kindly give me feedbacks um, or, you know, please forgive me. I'm still learning. 
I'll do my best. Uh, I find that this is a better way for me to present uh, discussion. Yes, like what I have to say is a discussion causing. So those are techniques I will get better and better. So thank you for bearing with me for a, an hour or and a half, especially Auntie Yanzi uh, and everyone else if you tune in. So I hope that we can continue. Even though Master has left us, uh, he has never left us. Come on. We have learned Buddhism so many times. Come on. We, we got to get through this illusion. I, 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 we cry, I cry, right? Losing a teacher is always painful. But, you know, if we go to Pure Land, why are we crying? You know, we should be laughing. I mean, he's leaving is to tell us. You know, no matter how permanent my presence may seem to you, like Queen Elizabeth to the British people, one day when she left, everyone will cry and we think about what she did. So, same goes for our master. Same goes for our Buddha. Why he left so early when he can live 200 years old? Because to tell us, don't be slackish. You know, keep up the pace. Gain your strength. And then you can go to Pure Land. Strength of vow. Strength of, uh, you know, strength of vow to go there. And then you use Amitofo. That's it. Good things is always pure and simple. All these things, 83 of them is because we twisted our mind. All right? So, Master Shewu also mentioned, I would like to echo it. In between a thought, decide where you go, including now. Your life is decided in between thoughts. That means how short, how quick it is. So, keep building up that right understanding and let it be the guiding force of your life. Then, like your shadow follow your body, you will get to a better, better platform. And ultimately to pure land, and then you come back. Okay? He's already back. Who knows? All right. Thank you. Uh, let's dedicate our merit, especially to Master Ching Kong and all, and all the... Um, and uh, let's begin. May the merits... Sorry, before that... All right. Sorry, I just need a textbook for that. Let's dedicate first. May the merits and virtues accrued from today's speech, sharing of the Taishang Ganying Pian, the Treatise on Responsive Retributions from the Exalted One, be dedicated to Venerable um, Master Ching Kong. Uh, may he be born in the highest realm in Pure Land and Return back to our Saha world ASAP, please, sir. Uh, may he return back and continue to guide us in, that, in many ways. And may we also dedicate Mary to our own cultivation, following in his footsteps, in the footsteps of the Buddha, footsteps of the Master, great, great Master Ching Kong, and also all the venerables who are currently showing us the example. May our, it also reaches everyone else in their family and their karma creditors. May they be at peace. May they return back to their truest self uh, and also vow to reborn in pure land gradually or suddenly. I hope suddenly, but things take time. And may this also, this merit reaches all corners of the world. You know, there's too many pain, suffering that we have not seen yet. And may this merit reaches them, no matter where they are. Uh, there will be someone to help them. There will be someone to assist them, to get out of that zone, get back to on their feet and um, have a better life than they were. And also their karma creditors. So, especially to our uh, Amitabha Nusawa's youth group, May our Dharma endeavors get better, more and more um, strength to go through uh, daily life and return back to Dharma. Our strength of faith and vow in the Buddha Dharma is stronger. May this dedica merit dedicated to them and all the practitioners of Pure Land, of Buddhism in general, and also all the good religions, all the religions of the good. Teachings. 
May the merits and virtues accrue from this work, adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and leave the teachings for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo, have a good night, good morning, and good night. Uh.